Imagine if you will, you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land, whose boundaries are that of imagination. That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, Toledo Symphony Land. <laughs> you guessed it, it's our Halloween episode, and boy do we have a show for you today. Joining me in the studio are the Toledo Symphony's music director, Elaine Troll Dell. Oh! We also have the TSO's president and CEO, Zach O'Lantern Vassar. And we have principal second violin and artistic administrator, Merwin Boo. And finally, we have a very special guest today, and I've got a little fanfare for you. Please welcome our friend, our old friend. (laughs) Forgot about the applause, sorry. Please welcome our old friend, Bob Clemens, who is also the resident thespian slash cellist. (laughs) Robert Bobbing for Apples Clemens. Welcome, Bob. Thanks. So much. (laughs) So you all like your Halloween names? I think Bob's name is the best. Yeah, Bob. Bob Bobbing for for Apples. apples. Bobbing for Apples. (laughs) So... uh, what are you doing, Elaine? Oh, you're you're looking at your script. <laughs> He's marking up his score, of course. Yeah, yeah. Mar- yeah something like that. <laughs> Give me something to study. I study. Yeah. <laughs> we we have a lot of uh, activities for our special Halloween episode. I love this episode every year. I yeah. really do. Yeah, we we get to let our hair down, so to speak. Um, we have a little play that we're going to put together today and play for you a little bit later in the podcast. We also have a, a fun Halloween password game that we're going to play. But first, we want to talk about a couple of concerts that the TSO is doing in in conjunction with Halloween. Um, there's the Halloween Spooktacular. That happens every year. It's uh, Sunday at the Valentine Theater at 2 o'clock p.m. There's fun and festivities at 3.30 p.m. There's performance. I want to talk about that. But let's start with another film with orchestra from the TSO. And the film is Psycho. Let me bring up the... There, we all recognize that. Um, So this is going to be at the Valentine Theater Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, Elaine, you are, uh, are you conducting the psycho or are you? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> he does it every I, week. I, I take that personally. <laughs> every time I, well, I, I hesitated because he looked at me with this look of terror in his face. And I think it's just because I said your name, Elaine. Right. Maybe it was the subject matter. Yeah. You, you didn't know what to expect next, right? The knives. <laughs> anyway, tell us about Psycho Film with Orchestra. This is an amazing score. I know. I know. We talk about the, the movie is iconic, right? It was it, probably the first movie where the the hero is killed in the middle of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> they hire the biggest star of the moment, and they kill her off like within the the first half of the movie. Oh, I think I gave <laughs> that's the a bunch spoiler. Out. That's a bit of a spoiler, huh? No spoilers. <laughs> oh no, no spoilers. Let oh. me let me bring up some music for you, and you try this again. <laughs> Something a little scary oh, there. Okay, now tell us what's happening. Well, this is an incredible movie and a score that's even more incredible. And uh, the very particular thing about the score is that it's for only strings. And you would think, you know, a very luscious score from the the period and you would have a symphonic and all that. But this is really interesting because he uses and also the leitmotif, the themes that go throughout. There, There are just a few of them. But it's so strongly made. Yeah. And of course, there's the iconic shower scene where somebody dies in the middle of the movie, which we're not going to tell. And, and then uh, it's, it's very, it's one of, like I would say, the first real psychological thriller mm-hmm. uh, because it's not just about being scared, it's about being scared of what might happen, right? It's not, so it's yeah. really, 
and and it really it it, it sends you in all these different places and I, I don't want to I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to say too much. <laughs> well, you already told us about the, the protagonist being uh, killed off. That, that's because I thought you'd cut that. <laughs> so that, that that's There's why no we're cutting. starting over. With <laughs> There's no cut. Repeat after me. There's no cutting in Toledo Symphony Lab, right? <laughs> well, the, uh, uh, it's appropriate that you said the word cutting because <laughs> one one of the the most important. Uh, an iconic moment of this movie, right, is when you hear the slashes in the of the knife, yeah. in the the, uh, the strings and the violin. Uh, yeah, and the strings yeah. and the violin, and uh, it's it's really a special moment. I've never conducted it before. I mean, I've heard it many times, like, uh, and no, but you know, it's uh, what tempo is it? What key signature is it? What, what is it? You know, yeah. how is it orchestrated? Like all the the strings are all divided. It's not just one violin, one violin, two. It's like. You know, violin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and <laughs> and, and that's what I don't know makes it very special. Yeah. And uh, I think that just to have the the guts to do that at that time, to say, well, <laughs> okay, this is the the score we're gonna, we're, we're gonna make for this. It's just a string orchestra, and we yeah. keep we're gonna keep it very uh, airy, you know, and mm -hmm. and, and just uh, and uh, it's amazing. And you go directly from you know, pump pump. And all of a sudden, there's this theme where she's driving the car at the beginning. Yeah. And it's kind of a sla uh, quote unquote a love theme, but it's not really love theme. And so he, he captures perfectly, as, as John Williams does now, you know. Yeah. But in, in those days, to capture perfectly an emotion that is not a black or white um, a emotion, that's something in the gray area, it's a gift. I mean, I, I, I'm looking at it, I'm amazed. Yeah. The dee da dee da dee da. It's like, okay, well, okay, it's so simple. Yeah. How do you come up with it? It's so unsettling, though. Yeah, too. exactly. You yeah. know, and, and you, you can't really figure out the tonality, right? Just being of unsettling, right? It moves around, modulate, comes back, moves along, uh, around, modulates again. So it's really very exciting. And to hear it live, it's probably one of the most interesting ones to hear live because, you know, the power of the music that's direct at you. As something more than a soundtrack, that's because the soundtrack is kind of behind, you know, the talking, yeah. all that. But especially the shower scene there with that, I can't wait. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's gonna be. I think uh, uh, I can tell you're excited. I'm about very, that. I, I know I'm very. Ex I mean, you know, I like Beethoven and Mahler too, but I'm very excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bernard Herrmann, I mean, wrote other Hitchcock uh, mm -hmm. film scores yeah. as well, but this is definitely the standout. I want to ask you a question, Elaine. Does your anxiety level? increase with the anxiety level of the film that you're you're bringing the music to i mean uh, honestly I, yeah and i i have to be professional no i have to control <laughs> the situation i mean when i'm learning it when i'm watching the movie i mean i i was uh, when i was a teenager i was i still am but when i was a teenager i'm not still a teenager I mean, but i uh, it'll make sense in a minute but, <laughs> Since I've been a teenager, since I was a teenager, I'm getting out of it. Okay, yes. I I was a big, big, big Hitchcock fan. You oh, know, okay. from uh, like you know, I know even the movies like uh, The Trouble with Harry that people don't really know. You know, uh, and uh, you know Rope. Uh, well, that's a bit more. Well but all these movies we used to watch those every week, and it's like ju ju just to be a, and you know they're they're movie of a certain era. But I think there's some craftsmanship in that, and the time it takes. You know, to set the, to set the story, to set the suspense. It's something that sometimes we lose a little bit. Yeah. And there's a, I think there's a parallel to be made with symphonic, the symphonic world and those movies that take time to install the, the action and a symphony, you know, the music of the symphony that takes time also. It's like, you know, it's the quote of slow food, <laughs> great quality, yeah. but you know, take your time to do it. And those movies really, they took their sweet time to do that. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. Well, you make it sound very enticing, and we all, you know, know the film as it mm. is, but with the added music, it sounds like a really great experience. Um, before we talk about the Halloween Spooktacular, uh, I want to hear a little bit more from you, Bob. You know, we haven't had you on in a while, and I just want to see while. what you've Nothing been up personal. to. And, and, <laughs> and you're, uh, you're involved in the, in the Halloween Spooktacular, right? Yes, um, I think I'm going to be the uh, MC. Yeah. Yep. MC. <laughs> you heard it here first. MC M Monster in charge. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very, very good. I'll, I'll give that a. <laughs> No, nope, that's the wrong button. Well, Sorry. That, that, that's the end of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> cut it off short, right? Or cut for time. Okay, well, that is our Halloween episode <laughs> for this year, for 2022. 
So, Bob, I'm going to ask you to tell us. Uh, I've got a little reverb that we heard earlier, and uh, I pulled it out just for this show. So, and just for you, because <laughs> I want to hear that Boris Karloff voice, right? Tell us what you've been up to uh, since we had you on the program last. Much practicing for rehearsals and concerts, and teaching private students. They're a frightening lot. I just love to be a fly on the wall in your life day to day. Do do you see something at the? <laughs> no, uh, you don't. At, you really don't. At the uh, grocery store, you see a ridiculously priced object and start cackling in the <laughs> grocery store aisle, frightening the children. I, I'm going to have to try that someday. You know? You're a bad influence, Zach. Yeah. Mm. Hey, you heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the Halloween Spooktacular. It's uh, it's subtitled Fantastic Beasts. Is that the theme of the program? It's happening Sunday at Valentine at, at 2 o'clock. Fun and festivities. I'm all about fun and festivities. And the performance is at 3.30 p.m. So back to Fantastic Beasts. What's the uh, the premise behind this particular concert? Well, we're taking a bit of inspiration from one of the Harry Potter books, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, but we're really using that more as a springing off point okay. for an entire concert that allows us to explore the intersection of the worlds of music and magic and monsters, and it's really just a great way to interpolate music from all over the classical canon, as well as some great movie music. A lot of it from the Harry Potter world, but not all of it. Like, there's, we're definitely kind of jumping around a little bit, you know, traveling all over the all over the world to discover these fantastic beasts and the music that accompanies them. And yeah. and Bob Clemens is going to be our stalwart guide, you know, <laughs> keeping Elaine on track. You know, <laughs> Elaine's going to try to indulge in some sort of musical yeah. flights of fancy. He'll try to slip in some, you know, some things here and there, and you know, Bob's going to kind of keep the show on the road it's gonna be great it's a lot of fun wow sounds great Elaine, are you gonna wear a costume of are course you, of you're course. dressing up for the uh the concert yeah uh, everybody else well absolutely and we're i something i should have mentioned right off the top um, we're so excited after you know some years where we've not been able to you know like it's you know for covid reasons to be able to kind of incorporate the ballet into the the halloween program to have you know the ballet dancers joining us for some some really kind of spooky choreography as yeah. well and to be able to partner mm. with them is that's really exciting so yeah. uh, and not just one but two different um collaborations so definitely something to kind of anticipate so you want to bring the kids in the uh, two o'clock hour right because there's <clears throat> fun and festivities maybe I mean, not what? so much the psycho though <laughs> <laughs> but for the spooktacular yeah they can come sunday afternoon at two o'clock this is at the valentine theater mm -hmm. both of these uh, actually the psycho is friday at 7 p.m and i'm not talking about you elaine i'm talking about the film right <laughs> and, <laughs> and i'm at the orchestra every day <laughs> yes the spooktacular is sunday afternoon at 2 p.m both at the valentine as i mentioned uh what kind of festivities do you have planned for for uh, families uh, there's um, a wonderful um, spooktacular activity fair that our symphony guild or symphony league puts together every year um, activities for kids uh, crafts tables um, it, there, there's just a whole spooky activity fair in the grand lobby of the valentine and everybody gets really into this so yeah. uh, you know there's there's some amount of candy um there are some bars set up so uh, people can try to dance like a ballerina, okay. um, which to me is terrifying. That's not but the other people bar are I thought you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> there are also other bars with only one R. Bring the um, parents. <laughs> <laughs> for the parents. Uh, but it, it's just, it's a fun afternoon. And as the pandemic has happened, we, we've tried to bring this back in, in different ways. But this feels like our first real spooktacular back. Costumes encouraged. One of my favorite memories about the Halloween Spooktacular was that that was, <laughs> I think. I know, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Alain, it was oh, your first it uh, uh, family series concert. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember. Let me, go, get, let me get some music up here. I went, this is kind of a Stranger Things vibe here. Mm -hmm. So I went down to Alain Trudell's dressing room and he's talking about the weird activity that the Imagination Station folks have planned for him. And he was supposed to blow things up, and he said, not kosher to fire code. So instead, they made him lay on a bed of nails. 
<laughs> I had a bed of nails under me and a bed of nails over me. And wow. they put a concrete, a big piece of concrete, and with a big, uh, how do you say, mass? Sledgehammer. Uh, sledgehammer. sledgehammer. A Mahler six hammer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just, uh, the guy just went, went at it, and he just broke it over me, over all this. With the orchestra uh, looking around and just hoping for the best. I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but, uh, and it that was, was still your first year. They had high hopes. Yeah. <laughs> and that was my introduction to this the spectacular. <laughs> so how are you going to, you know, one up yourself this year? Oh boy. Well, um, I, I I don't know yet. I I'm, I'm going to try to stay safe. You know, I, I don't recommend. <laughs> I mean, the Toledo Symphony doesn't recommend uh, kids trying. You know, the nail thing. That's yeah. very, very important. Yeah. <laughs> Only but, professionals. Uh, well. And well, conductors. I have to say the people from Imagination Imagination Station were absolutely wonderful because it was a fire code thing that we couldn't use the first prop we had, and they were very nice and comforting. The only things we never had a rehearsal, so the <laughs> only time we did it was at the show. <laughs> so I don't wow. know. We'll try to come up with something interesting this year. I yeah. just remember they put those plexiglass shields so that no pieces of concrete or maybe blood would <laughs> hit the orchestra. And they made you wear this hysterical, like, I know. <laughs> jacket. Is there a video of this somewhere? There is. Yeah. I have it on my so, phone. But I, uh. I would like to say that no piece of concrete was armed during the performance. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, I think it's ironic that the fire code prevented you, you know, because they wanted to keep everybody safe. But they were like, oh, Elaine, we'll put him in a bed of nails. That's no problem. <laughs> Right? He's just a conductor. Wow. People. People. My, my favorite part of that story, though, I don't know if I've told this on air, but it, when I looked to Elaine, I said, are, are, you, are you okay with this? And he said, oh, I'm sure it's going to be fine, or they wouldn't ask me to do it. That is a huge amount of trust that you put into other people, but it also says a lot about your, yeah, I'll go with it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's jump into some of the uh, activities that we have here in Symphony Lab today for a Halloween special. Um, a little bit later, we're going to play a version of uh, this this play based on In the Hall of the Mountain King. Now, you're doing the, are you doing that, uh, Grieg? We part? are actually yes. being joined by the ballet for okay. that piece. So yep. this is, it's a real highlight of the program. Excellent. So we have our own highlight based on that. Uh, of course, music written by Edvard Grieg, we all know and love it. Uh, and, and the play, Peer Gent, by Henrik Ibsen. And so I have adapted that scene in the Hall of the Mountain King for Toledo Symphony Lab. We all have different parts, except for me. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not actually involved in the play. So, Bob, you're going to be the narrator. Elaine, you're going to be the titular character of Peer Gint. And the Troll King is Merwin, and the Troll King's daughter is Zack. Okay? So you've Perfect all been casting. Assigned. Well done. Very, yes. Great. Anyway, we're going to practice our troll noises because I have a bunch of different cues here for troll noises, and maybe we can incorporate these later, but we'll, let's just practice a little bit and give people a taste of, of what's to come. All right? Let me turn up a little reverb for the troll. Now, the first cue is just mumbling and grumbling and grunting. Okay, so let's try that together. <laughs> Wow, it sounds like rehearsal. <laughs> that was great. Okay. Now, we have to chant in rhythm as <clears throat> trolls. We have to say, one of us, one of us, and keep repeating us, it, okay? So I'll give you a cue. This is my conducting debut on Toledo Symphony Lab. Here we go. One of us, one of us, one of us, one of us, one of us. You really shouldn't have specified unison. We didn't do a great job. Of that. <laughs> That's good enough. Good enough for a Symphony Lab. All right, now we have troll noises. Uh, you're saying bite him, eat him, roast him, toast him. Um, basically, ways to serve up the title character, right? So here we go with the troll noises. Roast him. Toast him. Bite him. Roast him. Mustard. Toast him. Wow. <laughs> he get mustard. And then Merwin throws in marinade. <laughs> I said ketchup, but I tried to make it subtle. It was not subtle. Okay. <laughs> I fear Dijonese. this. <laughs> yes. 
Hollandaise sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Candy corn. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, man. That's like the worst uh, <clears throat> recipe ever. Okay. Sound of confused trolls shrieking and running. So this is a, our last uh, cue. Ready? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I think you guys broke the microphones. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Now I'm going to add that later to uh, our, our play, and we'll get to that later. But Do you need us to say the end? <laughs> with, with the character? Oh, yeah. Which? Well, you're going to say the end. Let's yeah. all say the end together. No, actually, the narrator says that. It, it says, says everyone, everyone all together. together. Yeah. Oh, everyone all together. T-T. Okay. Well, I haven't even read my own script. Here we go. Okay. The end. Ready? The, the end. end. Let's try it again Can with reverb. Can we do that with the guillotine? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the end. Yeah. Okay. That that, Let me set it up. Yeah. All okay. right. Here we go. The, the end. end. Perfect. So we'll get to the uh, play a little bit later. But first, we're going to run through the top 10 phobias in the U.S. And I'm going to give you the name of the phobia, and you tell me what it is. Some of them are, are pretty obvious. And... Um, then if any of you share the phobia, I want to hear about it. Or I want to know about it, okay? So I have a little more music for us. Okay, the, the, the top 10. We'll start with number 10. Tryptophobia. Do you know what that is? Fear of tripping. <laughs> it's a fear of holes, actually. Pretty close. Yeah. Anybody afraid of holes? Mm. No? Okay. Aerophobia. Number nine. That is the fear of flying. Uh, A E R. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Gotcha. Aerophobia. Number eight is misophobia. Mm, that's the fear of artichokes. Mm. No, it's the fear of germs. Fear of germs. Germy like, artichokes. <laughs> like Howard Hughes, you know, locking mm-hmm. himself up mm-hmm. in his room. Okay, claustrophobia. We all know what that yeah. is. Yeah. Right, fear of small spaces. Yeah. Does anybody yeah. have claustrophobia? I totally do. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. Bob, Zach, Elena Merwin. So no. Okay. Uh, number six is astrophobia. Now, this is something that I've known animals to have. But fear of donkeys. Humans. It's no. <laughs> <laughs> the fear of thunder and lightning is Whoa. astrophobia. That's huh. number six. Number five is cynophobia. Spelled with a C, C Y N O, cynophobia. I think that's the fear of chickens, chicken beaks, chicken feet. Close, close. Fear of dogs, actually. Dog you, feet. You would have gotten there eventually. Okay, number four. You probably know this. Agoraphobia. That's fear of that people, fear right? Of pretty much everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're afraid to go outside. Yeah. Is it yeah. a fear of open or crowded spaces? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Acrophobia. We all know what that is, yeah. right? Fear of heights. Anybody have fear of heights? I have that a little bit, I think. No? Too bad you're tall. Yeah, I know. Harder they fall. Okay, number two. Ophidiophobia. O P H I D I O. Public speaking one? Ophidiophobia. No, public speaking didn't make it in the top no. ten. Dumb waiters. Uh. This is the fear of snakes. Ah, hmm. really? That was yeah. my next guess. Does anybody have a fear of snakes? No. Ophidiophobia? No, not particularly. Ophidiophobia. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and number one, you'll definitely get arachnophobia. Mm. Yeah. Spider. That was our first movie choice. <laughs> <laughs> I suffer from that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Always have. I don't tell my girls, though, so I hope they're not listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's interesting, and I, I went down the list, and I found something that I don't think you can get. I'm going to try to pronounce this. This is number 26 on the list of phobias around the world, actually, and this is hippopotamonstrosis equipped phobia. Whoa. You know what that is? Fear of dancing hippos. Trampled on by a horse? <laughs> Fear of large cool. mammals in the water or something? No, you're, you're kind of. I mean, you're kind of on the right track. It's a, it's a fear of long words. Oh. <laughs> In complete seriousness. Really? Wow. That's wow. A, really wow. a thing. You can look it up. H i p p o p o t o m o n s t r o s e s q u i p p e d a l i o p h o b i a. 
I fear love of long it. words. So wow. it's basically a fear of high school English teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Something like that. So now we're going to play a different game, and this is based on the TV show Password. Any of you remember Password? Did they, they don't have Password in Canada, right? <laughs> Do they have Halloween in Canada? Is there like a Canadian Halloween? All we get to of watch course. is Hockey Night in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Which these days is a little scary. <laughs> Don Cherry has those great suits that, that scare everybody. It yeah. is true. So anyway, I'm going to pass out these cards, and you each take one. And don't show it to anybody else. So your card has words on it, right? And they're all nouns. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You have eight words, eight nouns, and... Um, the way that we play Password is we split into two teams. So, Elaine and Merwin, you are a team. Cool. Uh, Bob and Zach, you are a team. One of you is the clue giver. The other is the clue guesser. So, if you're the guesser, you can set your words aside. You don't need them right now. Are you going to give, Merwin? Sure. sure. Okay. If you like so, guessing? Elaine will guess. And, and you guys will go first. You have one minute to get as many of these eight as you can. So, if you can't get it right away, you might want to pass to okay. the next one. Okay. Yeah. So I'll start the uh, music. And so these are all Halloween-related words. Yeah, and they're <laughs> all nouns, Halloween-related rela- nouns. And you give, as a clue giver, you just say one of the, you say a word, a word. Yeah. right? And then you respond with what you okay. think it is, Elaine. Okay. And you can keep working on the same word, yeah. right? And sure. then if you want to pass, pass to the next word. Okay, just Sounds see how good. many words you can get right in one minute, and then we'll switch over to uh, Zach and Bob. Okay, let me pull up the timer. And as soon as you hear the music, you can go. Sun. Moon. Perfect. Uh, September. October. Okay. Koshmar. Nightmare. Okay. Uh, spider. Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's try that again. Uh, uh, let's see. Web. Very, very close. Uh, uh, um, cobweb. Perfect. Uh, search engine. Uh, Google. No. Keep, keep uh, going. Other search engines. I don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Yahoo, scratch Yahoo. that one. Marie. Zombie. Zombie. Uh, okay. Uh, only Pass. one word. Okay. Pass, perfect. Pass. Uh, blank fear. Uh, five seconds. Five seconds. Oh, uh, prim- prim- Superman. Uh, Superman. Ah, uh, uh. no. <coughs> no, we got four. It's a good okay, start. so you got four in that round. Excellent. Yeah. Let's fear. switch to the other team. And which one of you is the giver? Which one of you is the guesser? Doesn't matter. Okay. Well, why I'll don't give. You- Oh, you give and Bob will guess, all right? You guys, let's start, <coughs> let me restart the music timer. On the, okay, as soon as you hear the music, you can go. Witch. Broom. Broomstick. That, yeah, you yeah. got it. Okay. Jack o' lantern. Pumpkin. Good. Phantom. Ghost. Facewear. Charades where it's really I well patch. on radio. <laughs> <laughs> Let's skip to the next one. Okay. Uh, skeleton. If you can't get it, you can pass, Bob. Pass. Okay. Casper. Ghost. Good. Uh, bone. Yard. Head. Skull. Got it. Um, Ten seconds. Devil. Demon. Good. Bad. Good. Bad. Very bad. That's the end of your minute. How many did you get? Got uh, Five, got I broomstick, pumpkin, uh, ghost, skull. skull, demon. Yeah, so five. Okay. Yeah, one point lead. <laughs> wow. That Excellent. Ends. Okay, that now ends switch. Now. That ends yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so now we're going to do one more round where the Great. other person is the giver. I got good clues. All right, okay. so you have your clues. Oh, you we're going to start the music. Too. Bones. All right, here we go. Elaine and Merwin. Sound. Wave. Uh, Noise. Pass. Okay. Transformation. Metamorphosis. Uh, animal. Uh, werewolf. Xylophone. Uh, 
Skeleton? Yeah. Uh, formula. Yeah, you got it. Formula. Formula. Potion. Magic. Spell. Thank you. Beb, a web. Spider. Uh, accoutrement. Oh. Uh, no French nest. words. Uh, 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 <laughs> or, uh, costumes? Yep. Funeral. March. Box. <clears throat> oh, funeral. Uh, funeral's not March. Uh, uh, funeral. No. Uh, graveyard. Uh, coffin. Box. Almost. Uh, tombstone? Tomb? Almost. Uh, pass. Okay. Pass. We, we go uh, massacre. Something massacre. Ten seconds. <sighs> Movie. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I. It's, um, oh. Texas. Oh, chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you got that in Did I get one. chainsaw in it, right? <laughs> wow. Did I get chainsaw in time? Yeah, yeah. Casket. Okay. Casket. Right, we got, got all Ca- but one. Yeah. All but one? Yeah. Nice. Did seven. you not say casket? Seven. No, I didn't say casket. Sure? I said coffin. Oh, you said coffin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, seven. Yeah. I seven. almost feel like we should give it to you for coffin, but you yeah. got so many. No, it's that. only if he sneezes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bob yeah. and Zach, you guys ready? Okay. Here's your music. Cemetery. Graveyard. Undead. Alive. Zombie. Hay fork. Pitchfork. Pranks. Yeah, that that actually had part of the clue. Yeah, right about yeah. That. American that. Gothic. Pitchfork. <laughs> Got it. That <laughs> Those two words. Um, prankster. Uh, 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 <laughs> Sweets. Candy. Bloodsucker. Um, a leech. Uh, Dracula. Vampire. Yes. Ceremony. Um, uh, uh, yeah. um, Five seconds. Pass. And. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can this tell him, Bob. It's okay. Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Yeah. Yes. Like parachute. What is the word? I can see it. <laughs> the word, right? Yeah. Like they're nice back. Guy. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. come up with a with a clue for fangs. Yeah, fangs, teeth, teeth, teeth. pointy. Yeah. Then long. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you have to go back and forth and get a couple of words in the queue before you get to it. But our winners are Elaine and oh, Merwin. Six. Congratulations. Yeah. What was the point spread? <laughs> yeah, how many I don't points think I did helped on that. Uh, I don't really know what the margin of victory was. I'm, I don't know. We had 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Four <plus> seven. <laughs> and we probably had less than that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we're, we're... Ten and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to move on. Charitable. Charitable. I love it. We're definitely going to move on. <clears throat> so... Um, that we, was fun. Uh, it was fun. And, m- and maybe we can find other ways to do password in the future. That was but, great, um, great fun. Yeah. Okay, well, moving on. Let's talk a little bit more about Psycho. I know that, uh, Zach, you love Hitchcock. You're a Hitchcock I fan. Do. I do. Do you, you have anything you want to tell us on that front? Um, do you know what the blood going down the drain was? It was not blood. It was like chocolate sauce, It was chocolate right? sauce, yeah. yeah. They wanted to get the right color, uh, so it was believable, but anything that was meant to look like blood was too thin, and it would just it would immerse with the water. Yeah. Um, and it was shot in black and white, even though color was standard, because it was, first of all, cheaper, but second of all, scarier. Yeah, cheap and scary. But Just the movie like us. came together <laughs> in a hugely fast timeline, like it, from 1960s standards. It was uh, from first shot to, to launch, it, a record production run. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Psycho trivia from uh, Zach Vassar. So we've already established that uh, In the Hall of the Mountain King is going to be done on the Spooktacular with Toledo Ballet. Um, Elaine, you're conducting the concert. You want to talk a little bit more about the rep on that program? Yes. So we we build a story and we we, we put some rep around the repertoire around it. So we have things that are very, you know, of course, from, from Halloween. Uh, we have Symphonie Fantastique, which is the, the march uh, to the scaffold. Yeah. We have uh, excerpts from Harry Potter from John Williams. Uh, we also have we also have this piece by Bartok, which is Transylvanian dances. 
So uh, uh-huh. as we talked about vampires, that, that, and that's not something we play often. And I don't think we've ever played it. So it's going to be a lot of fun playing that. And we have a very long excerpt of Firebird also mm-hmm. uh, near the closing of the uh, uh, of the concert. And uh, the Toledo uh, Ballet is joining us, as Merwin said, for In the Hall of the Mountain King. And also uh, with a very special presentation of uh, the fossils uh, with another kind of dancing. Yeah. Huh? Oh, the fossils? The, uh, you have uh, fossils from uh, Saint Saëns. Uh, oh, oh, from Carnival his of Carnival of the yeah, Animals. Yeah. With, yeah. With, with tap dancing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are you going to dance, Bob, or are you just emceeing? I'm just going to MC. Excellent. We you don't want to that. see me dance. Well, well, you know, if the spirit you know, moves you. <laughs> nice. So we're going to put your thespian skills to good use. So speaking of in the Hall of the Mountain King, um, as I mentioned earlier, and we practiced troll noises earlier, We're going to read this script through for the film, uh, for the story. (laughs) I didn't sign up for a film. (laughs) Yeah, you have to to play the music to accompany this film, Elaine. Um, So we're going to go through and record it. And through the magic of of, uh, editing radio, I'm going to actually present it as the end of our podcast. So uh, we'll skip ahead right now and we'll bring you the finished version of In the Hall of the Mountain King, starring Zach Vassar as the Troll King's daughter, Merwin Sue as the Troll King, and Bob Clemens as our narrator, and Elaine Trudell is Pear Gint, the hero of our play. Here we go. Pear Gint, the star of our play, enters the Hall of the Mountain King, where he is promptly captured by trolls. What the deuce? Hello, handsome. Pear Kent gives her the once over. And who might you be? I'm the Troll King's daughter, of course. The wheels turn inside Pear Kent's head. Hey, well, I'm a prince, so let's get married. Enter the Troll King. What's going on here? Prince Pear wants to marry me. Well, then, you can marry the princess on one condition. And what is that, pray tell? First, the good news. If you marry my daughter, you can have everything that is mine. Yay! Half now, and half later. So far, so good. But you must never leave here. Yay! And you must become a troll yourself. Hey, that's actually two conditions. Exit stage left. Our hapless hero finds that the stage left is blocked. Oops. Exit stage right. Stage right is also blocked. Listen, it's not so bad being a troll. We have everything, even a silk bow for the end of your tail. I don't have a tail. You should get one. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye. Exit pair again, pursued by troll. He tries to climb up the fireplace, but he's blocked. He crawls to the window, but it won't open. He tries to open the gate, but it's stuck. Oh, well, look around. Frightened by the bell, the trolls all run away. The palace collapses and everything disappears, except Pear Gint. Now that's what I call Saved by the Bell. The The end. end. This program is a production of WGTE Public Media in collaboration with our sponsor, the Toledo Symphony Orchestra. You can download episodes as a podcast by going to our website at wgte.org slash lab. You can also subscribe to us through your podcast app of choice, including Apple, Google, and Spotify podcasts. Don't forget to check out all the upcoming events at the Symphony by visiting their website at ToledoSymphony.com and their various social media outlets on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
You can find the TSO streaming platform online at stream.artstoledo.com. Many thanks to Alan Trodell, Zach O'Lantern Vassar, Merwin Boone. This has been your friend, Robert Bobbing for Apples Clemens. And this has been Toledo Symphony Lab from FM 91. <laughs> <laughs>